Okay, good. Welcome to the Monday, May 13th, 2024, uh, Town Orono Town Council meeting. I'll start with roll call. We have Councillor Powers, Councillor Baker, Councillor Kenny, Councillor Marks, Councillor Councillor Berthsel, Councillor Laraway, and Councillor Demerit all present and accounted for. Agenda re item two on our agenda is agenda review, possible amendments. Amendments. Um, I have a couple, and these all we all have to take each of these. We have to take the orders by um, unanimous consent, right? So we um, we'd like to add. Uh, town manager appointment for the public works director. Can we just do that by unanimous? Is there any, can we have unanimous consent to add that to our agenda? Okay. okay. That's unanimous. I am going to abstain from the public hearing on the golden bean nutrition uh, victuals license uh, for a potential personal connection. And I'm going to ask to pull that from the consent agenda so it can be voted on as a separate mm -hmm. item. And Councilor Marks will lead the public hearing on that on that item. And we have one more. Oh, we needed to pull um, order 2469 from the uh, consent agenda and add it to new business uh, pending a con uh, to approve it conditionally upon the successful on site inspection. Okay, so can I get a unanimous consent on that as well? All approved? Yep. Councilor Kenny has a question. Yeah, I thought um, I wanted to pull twenty four eighty four from the consent consent agenda. I thought we normally did that right at the beginning of the consent agenda. Do we have to do that up front now? Yeah, this would be when this is typically when we would. Um, <clears throat> this would be typically where we'd pull something from the consent agenda. So if you want to pull it from the agenda, you you could ask. Well, actually, anybody can anyone, including a member of the public, can ask to pull something from the consent. I know that's why we, we just vote voted. On it. We'll we just, just voted on the one you just did, but I don't think we have. We voted to add an agenda item for the order. Um, and then you just pulled one that we voted on, correct? And I, yep, that's how we which did we it. Don't, which we don't have to do that, do we? Pull, we don't have to vote to pull it from a consent. To agenda. pull it from the All consent. Right. So can I ask that twenty four eighty four be pulled from the consent? Yes, agenda? you may. Thanks. So, and I would also like to add an order. Appointing Councillor Marks as the chair of the special council committee. Uh, this order would be 2482. Um, so, Shelly, you're suggesting that we pull the order. We have on our agenda this evening, we have an order establishing a special council committee on nominations, valuations, and council policies for the 24 25 municipal year. Right now, it's on the consent agenda, which would mean it would be approved as a block. What um, we'd like to also, as part of our action this evening, appoint Councillor Marks to be the chair of that committee. And Shelly, you're suggesting we could do both of those in one order by pulling it from the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I am going to ask that we pull order 2482 from the consent agenda, add it to new business so we can amend it to name Councillor Marks as the committee chair, as we've discussed uh, in previous committee meetings, just to keep the public and councillors up to speed on where we are with that. Any questions or concerns? Shelly, anything we needed to vote on that we didn't vote on? Well, right now I have, um, right now I have Councillor Kenny has asked to pull 2484, so you'll want to get your consent on that. And then you just introduced <laughs> the idea of 2482 being pulled and amended so that it also appoints Councillor Marks at the same time that it establishes the committee. Well, I think the procedural question is, Councillor, we don't need a vote. Anyone, any a member of the public or council can pull something from the consent agenda per the charter um, and have it or have it voted on as a separate item within the context of a committee meeting. So Councillor Kenny doesn't have doesn't need unanimous consent to pull something from the consent agenda. You would need to you'd need unanimous consent to add something to the agenda okay. as a new order. Is that that's my understanding of what the charter requires. So um, we don't need we don't need a vote on Councillor Kenny's request, and I guess the only question is, do we need a, a vote on twenty four eighty two because we intend to treat it as new business and vote and amend it? Mm -hmm. But it's already on the agenda, so we're not actually adding it to the agenda; mm -hmm. it's moving it within the. So that you're makes pulling it out, but you're looking to amend it. Yep. So we don't need a vote for that either. Okay. Will we need a motion to amend it at the time? Yes. Yes, we will. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, I apologize for the the moving and shaking. Um, 
Anyone else have anything on the agenda review before we move on? Maybe I spoke too soon on how fast this meeting would go, Mitch. I'm sorry. You're right. Um, I'll take a, a motion to uh, approve the minutes of April 8th, 2024, April 10th, 2024, two sets, April 22nd, 2024, April 24th, 2024, and May 6th, 2024, inclusive of a uh, amendment that the clerk is going to read to us right now, uh, proposed by Councilor Marks. So on the minutes that was provided to Council of Monday, April 8th of 2024, Councilor Marks informed me earlier in the day of some clerical um, changes that would make it easier to understand. So under item two, agenda review, where it talks about adding the new committee in the first sentence of Council Chair Dan DeBerry briefed, the language has been changed to say, the idea of creating such a committee, which actually cleans up the intent of um, that language. And then if we skip near the second to the last page, it is talking about the order appointing the councilors to chair the following town council committees. And in the overview of the discussion that happened, um, there was a bit of confusion. And so in order to clarify the historic record for the future, we have added the word actually into a sentence that reads, Councilor Chair Demerit explained that standing committees are actually listed under the Municipal Ordinance Chapter 2, Section 30. So we'll be adding the word actually to that sentence, and that will clarify the preceding sentence in the minutes. But outside of that, that was all that was noted by council that needed to be changed. Yeah, Councilor Marks. I just wanna say that Shelley's being really nice to me because what's actually getting corrected there in the end is that I mistakenly said that that was in the charter and it's actually not, it's section 230 of the ordinances, which Dan got correct. And I just wanted that to be clear for the public. Thanks, Shelley. If, Council Kenny? if I have a question about this, I mean, it, I guess it's probably the time would be when we discuss it now that it's pulled out, correct? Sure, I'll okay. that if that's okay. Um, and I think there's one of these in here where I'm, I'm named E.O. Kenny or something like that. So maybe just a little, little typo. I might have been the 20th meeting. Okay, so if it's just like a misspelling grammar, yeah. clerical, I have the ability to make that switch. Okay. Um, so Leo, if you just want to get that to me, I can okay. get that corrected. Great. And okay. I apologize. No worries. It's a lot of minutes. It's hours and hours of minutes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm relieved that we got this much right. Um, <laughs> all the things we say over the course of six or eight or 10 hours of meetings. So thank you very much for that. Any other changes? Okay. Um, I'll take a motion to, did we already have a motion to approve the minutes? No. no. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? As so, moved. so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And thank you to Shelly and Amanda for the work you do. Uh, next item up is public comments. Do we have any public comments here in the audience? No, well, Belinda's all set. Pete, do we have anybody online? With a hand raised? hands raised online right now. All right. And next we'll turn to public hearings and Councillor Marks will chair the uh, public hearing A. Okay, so I think, Shelly, correct me if I'm wrong. I just need to say we're going to open the hearing on the initial application for a new Victor's license for Golden Bean Nutrition at 5 Mill Street. And then I'm going to turn it over to Pat Estes. Thank you, Pat. Hi, uh, Patrick Esty, Code Enforcement Officer. Um, so staff has uh, recommended approval, paperwork is in, inspections are done, and so we're recommending approval. Does anyone have questions? Councilor, oh, I'm on. I was on, you turned me off, Dan. He's taking good care of me over there. Um, so do we have any questions from council or from the public about this? Be curious to know what it is. Sounds exciting. Can you tell us anything about the nature of this business, Pat? So this is a bakery, um, but right now they're not um, doing any cooking on site. Uh, they plan to in the future, 
but this is basically a retail store with uh, bakery goods in it that you can go in, sit down. They'd like to have a couple of tables outside too. Um, and so in the future, they would like to operate uh, the business next door and, and add a kitchen in there in the future. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So... All right, no more questions, and we will close the public hearing on the Victor's license for Golden Bean Nutrition at 5 Mill Street. Thank you very much, Pat. Thank you, Sarah. Um, Pat, next up is we have a public hearing to consider an initial, nope, an initial, yes, we are going to do the public hearing now, and we pulled it from the consent agenda, right? So we're going to have a public hearing to consider an initial application for a new Victor's license food truck for Lola's Main Courses, LLC. So um, staff is asking for a conditional license um, based off of myself and life safety, um, Dave Daniels, completing an inspection when they are on site. Yep. Okay. Is there any comment from members of the public or? Nope. Council Marks. Pat, I just have a question. When we have a food truck that we're approving, how does that work? Is the food truck um, license in Orono, but it can go anywhere? Or how does that work with a food truck? So for each property, um, they have to get a individual permit. And then it's based off of how long do they plan on wanting to stay there? Is it basically three days and under, they can come to the code office and get a permit and operate for that. But if you want to operate more than that, then we ask you to go to planning board and get approval through planning board. And in this particular situation, um, they are within shoreland zoning. So that's why they had to go to planning board to get approval. Do we know how many days they're going to be in or no? I'm excited. Um, so all I can say is with this Vitruler's license, they can operate, you know, more than three days in a year. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Any other questions? Yep. I no public comment, so we will close the public hearing on a new Victor's license for Lola's Main Courses, LLC. Next item up on the agenda, item number six, is acknowledgement by council members. And I think we're starting, uh, well, we'll start with Councillor Powers or Baker and work our way this way. And we'll start at that side of the dia chamber next time. Perfect. Glad I sat here. Um, my acknowledgement is for uh, the public works staff. As uh, everybody here has heard me say, one of the best days of the year in Orno is when I've got a huge pile of brush in front of my uh, house and I come home from work and it's gone. So uh, thanks to the public works crew for doing that for everybody. It's a great service. Yeah, um, I'd like to acknowledge the... Um, um, the police department for their great work these last uh, few weeks. I, it's, it brings joy to my heart to walk down Main Street and see um, slow traffic and see the police are out. And uh, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. If you're watching police department, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Bob Robinson, the passing of Bob Robinson. Um, Bob uh, passed away last week in Fernand Fernandina Beach, Florida, where he lived since his retirement, and he spent his entire professional uh, career uh, as an educator in Orono, from a teacher, vice principal, principal at the junior high, middle high, uh, and then down at ASA. So he actually was the principal when our Mr. Tom Perry was vice principal. So uh, I just want to acknowledge his passing and his contribution to the town of Orono. Councilor Marks. Um, I'd like to acknowledge all of the public and staff and the advisory committee and the tour committee who um, during our on-site finalist day uh, met our three candidates and provided input to the council and just a lot of work to make that day happen. So thank you to everyone in the community who did that. Um, I also wanted to say thank you at the last potluck to the um, community members who organized, I'm going to mispronounce, I think it's Kovitsa, is that right, Matt? Band who came here to um, teach us dancing and um, really a lively event. And to the Orono Historical Society who brought us some amazing stories of growing up here in Orono and what childhood in Orono has been like for different people over the years. Thanks.
Great. I would like to add to Sarah's thanks for the search process. Um, Sarah herself, thanks for putting so much work into helping to organize that day. And um, thanks also to the members of the Basin neighborhood who came out for a work day this weekend and cleaned up a lot of trash and got rid of invasive species. And thanks for town staff participating um, in organizing that as well. I heard it was a really great day. I'd like to acknowledge all of the uh, many people who are serving on the uh, Comprehensive Plan Committee, um, coming from diverse backgrounds all around town, who are committed to visioning for our town for this next Comprehensive Plan. Um, I think it's going to be a really exciting one. Our first meeting happened last month, and looking forward to continuing those um, and digging into the weeds of municipal zoning and everything else that's uh, that makes a a difference that a lot of people don't realize in the uh, the ongoing work that we do and the ongoing work of the town. Okay, I'd like to pile on to uh, Councillor Baker's comments about public works. Uh, I participated in uh, No Ticket Day at the landfill this weekend, and it was amazing. Uh, our clerk tells us that uh, over the weekend, eight hundred fifty dollars in registrations for permit landfill permits. 34 permits came in over the weekend of or Oronians. Is that, that's not the right way. That's not what we're going to say. People from Orono, 34, 34 permits came in. I went up there six times with brush from my house, brought cookies up to the, the gentleman working and I think around my fourth run or so. Um, it was fabulous. I also want to thank public works and uh, parks and recreation for the attention they've given to the St. Mary's field, the little field that the, I think generally the little kids use. Um, it was needed a lot of attention and over the weekend or early today, it was, it was, um, all the things were done to it to turn it into really made a big improvement, make it safer for the little kids who are out there trying to catch grounders and fly balls and all the things. So good work on that front. I really appreciate the fast attention of, uh, of our staff to that. Yep. Uh, item seven is unfinished business. We have no unfinished business, which probably not. 100% true, but you know, it's under this agenda item, we have no unfinished business. Uh, consent agenda, can I get a motion to move the consent agenda with the changes we made at the start of the meeting? So moved. Okay. Second. I, I'm going to ask first, to, for the just for clarity, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda, items 2467 through 2484, excluding orders 2468, 2469, 2482 and 2484. That was the one, Leo. Mm -hmm. Yep. So moved. Council Larway moved. Council Berthelsel. Second. Seconds. All in favor. It's unanimous. Yep. <clears throat> Congratulations, Mitch, for your appointment to the OTO Fiber Corporation. And thank you for your service. Orno, thank you. Okay, next, um, this is the first one we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the first item we're going to do, uh, pulled from the consent agenda, is order, it's still got the same number, 2468. Mm -hmm. Order 2468, a victuals license for Golden Bean. Um, I would take a, as I mentioned at the top, I'm going to abstain on this matter, but I would take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. So moved and second. All in favor? That's six in favor with one counselor abstaining. Councilor Demerit. Thank you for that. And um, I'll take a motion to approve order 2469 with, um, we need to amend it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take it first to put it on the table, right? Yep. With I, an amendment. Okay. Um, I'll take an, a motion to um, put order 2469 on the table with an amendment to make it can do we need to do two steps or one you're going to make it you're going to amend it conditional upon a successful okay inspection. but we can just do one order one vote mm -hmm. we don't have to okay i would entertain a motion thank you for the um conditional approval of a victor's license for lola's food truck conditional upon a successful on-site inspection so moved second yep. all in favor And that passes unanimously. And we look forward to those however many days they're open. We look forward to it. 
Um, next, we will do, um, we'll take an order. Are we still the same number? Yep. Order number 2482. We'll have a motion to approve um, the establishment of a special council committee on nominations, evaluations, and council policies for the 24 25 municipal year with the amendment that Councillor Marks is appointed to chair that committee. Can I get a motion? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> yeah, can you? Um, I, for some reason, I, rem I remember we just talked, I thought we spoke briefly about it. Did, when was when did we move it to a consent agenda? Was that in a, a meeting after the April eighth one? Yeah, I didn't one of the. I mean, we got six sets of meetings, meeting minutes here. So we moved it. We had it in a committee discussion, and we agreed. The sense of the council in that discussion was to move it to the consent agenda. It was okay. But now we pulled it off so we could amend it and name Sarah the the chair. Gotcha. Okay. Yep, thanks. Let's proceed then. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor? Okay. That's unanimous. Moving right along. Yep. So now you're going to pick up here. 24 70. Oh, wait. Oops. Oops. No, I'm sorry. Jumping around on my page. 24 84? Yep. Yep. All right, now next up is uh, we need a motion to approve order 2484, which is an order setting the date of the June 10th public hearing at 5 p.m. for a public hearing to consider an amendment to the Town of Orono Code of Ordinances, Chapter 28, Personnel, Article 4, Working Environment, Section 2891, Potential Liability Claims of Harassment or Discrimination. Can I get a motion to approve? So moved. And a second? Second. Second. Is there a discussion? Yeah, I guess I just wanted to um, publicly state that you know I I advise to to pull this off because we have we've been advised by our intern town manager and by our town attorney against adding this amendment to our code of ordinances. Um, and based on my experience, um, I don't think it's I don't think this amendment is necessary. So I wanted to pull it out because I'm I'm not going to be in support of this. So that was my reasoning. All right. I don't want to talk about it now. I want to have a public hearing in a month, and then I want to vote on it again in another in two months after that. So, yeah, but uh, we can discuss it. Absolutely, people can discuss it. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that um, Leo, while well, Leo's right that we were init initially consulted that way, that there have been subsequent meetings with the town attorney where they indicated that they had no problem with this ordinance as written now, because it has significantly changed from the version that last went to public hearing. So I would really encourage people to read it, come to the public hearing. This second version had a very different response from legal counsel. Well, I, I guess I would comment to that, that legal counsel works for the, the board. The initial, uh, we've not heard as a group from the council that he, that they're, in, that they're suggesting we, that this in support of this overall. I understand that the language that is now there has been approved, and I think that's that's a little bit of a nuanced discussion. That you know, hit, our council's job is to do yeah. what we ask, essentially. So yeah. the initial was that he didn't think this was a good spot for this. So, and yeah. we haven't heard as a group anything differently. Yeah, so. I think I, I would be careful to not to quantify precisely the position of the manager, the attorney, the insurance company. Um, in terms, I think we've gotten some really good input and some, it's made some improvements. Um, but I, I'd be careful not to quantify, qualify anyone unless, unless they give it to us at the time of the, you know, at, in response to the final language, you know, it's, it, and it's hard to ask people to do that in terms of, you know, precisely tell us what your opinion is of this policy. So, um, <clears throat> and then they don't have a vote on the council. So that's kind of the, so. Totally agree. Just wanted to flag for the public that yeah. there have been a lot of steps in between. So yeah. thank you. Okay, um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of moving, uh, calling a public hearing on this matter for June 10th. Okay, six in favor. Uh, all those opposed? One opposed. And that uh, clears up that one. Thank you.
All right, now we are on to order 2484 in order approving the edits. And it's made to section 6.3, public participation, the council practices and procedures manual. Can I get an order to put this on the table? A motion? Dan, before we do that, Shelly, can I just ask, is this a numbering mistake? The last one also said 2484. Should this, in fact, be 2485? We seem to have two 2484s. Yeah, I would say that's probably the case. All right. So now it's order 2485. Could I get a motion to put that on the table? A motion to move that? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. It's, a, it's the first item under new business. So under consent, you had 2484, which was the one that you pulled. And then when we went to new business, we picked up the same number. It needed to advance one. Okay. And this is an order approving edits made to section 6.3, public participation in the council practices and procedures manual. This is uh, for background for by way of the public we've had um discussions in committee meetings about um we don't we haven't had a a standing public comment practice and we've worked as a council to establish a public policy um the public comment policy um as well to expand upon our public comment policy to include um protections for for staff um the naming of staff either uh, supportively or uh, critically in our public comment sections in, in the times when people come to the public and talk about town business. So I would welcome, that's how we got to this point in the conversation. And if the council adopts this, um, these guidelines this evening, they'll be how we manage comments from the podium um, as part of, or online uh, about during our public comment section or during discussions of any items before the council. Council Baker, do you have a question or a comment? Okay, sure. I would first thank Sarah for, for doing this, putting this together and say, you know, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need something like this. Um, but given kind of unfortunately where we are right now um, as a society and some of the um, things that have happened in, in other towns and, and, and other school boards, I think that... Um, Unfortunately, this is a this is a needed policy um, to provide guidelines and um, for both ourselves and, and the public. And um, I am in support of it. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, I would also thank Councilor Kenny. He's recognized for comments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I would also thank uh, Sarah for a ton of effort in on this and and. Uh, I do intend to support it. I've definitely been, um, it's been in a, it's, it's been a tough thing uh, for me to uh, ensure that we are not violating people's first amendment. And I think I I'm, I'm supporting it because I definitely agree with the entire spirit of, of what we're trying to accomplish, but I am cognizant that we may be in violation um, of the first amendment. And I, I guess I would say, and for the record, this this does not apply to council, so people can come forward and I guess speak about us directly with our names. But um, I guess I would say that if if a member of the public were to come forward with an argument to try, to make that case, um, I am interested in hearing that argument. We we tried, I think, to make sure we've done as best as possible and had a lot of good consulting and advice from school board members who have done a lot of work on this. So I, I feel good about all of that and appreciate all of that effort, but uh, it is still a bit of uh, concern for me. So I want, but I want to put that out there. Thanks. Great. Council Lowry. Yeah. Uh, just for anybody watching, I mean, Dan, you did give a, a brief summary of the changes being made here, but just to make clear um, that people are still encouraged um not just allowed but encouraged to come forward with uh concerns about uh running of the town the work that we do the work that um the town does and even departments um both positive and negative um but simply that we are if this passes we're um amending this so that people can't be talking about individual employees in, in any direction um and a big reason that we're doing this is um because of the huge potential legal liability um, 
of us sort of holding this forum where um, the staff um, is, you know, un, un, ostensibly under us slash under the town manager's um, management. So um, I am also interested if people have First Amendment concerns in hearing those, um, but I do intend to support this as well. Can uh, Council Powers. And, and I just want to, un, I understand both Leo's um, reservation, but we are working under two amendments that uh, are in opposed to each other. So if you're interested, I would look up um, both the First Amendment and the right to speak and also the 14th Me Amendment and people's right as a worker of a government of privacy. And so we have two amendments that are in conflict with each other, and that's why we've been working so hard to think this one through. Councilor Marks. Um, yes, thank you. I just also wanted to highlight sort of what everyone has said that um, Matt just said, we're trying to balance um, for sure everybody's First Amendment rights. Please come talk to us. Please tell us what you think is working well and isn't working well in the town. Please tell us directly what council is and isn't doing well. Um, we're trying to protect the also the rights of our employees under the 14th Amendment not to be um, critiqued in public for their work. And I wanted to point out that on letter E, um, it is delineated. If you do have a complaint about a specific employee, what you should do. Um, and it does say that um, for any comments, positive or negative, about a specific employee should be directed via email, phone call, or personal conversation to the town manager. Comments or complaints regarding the town manager should be directed via email, phone call, or personal conversation to the council chair. Whenever possible, it's preferable to put complaints in writing. Um, so there is a, an avenue there for those. We don't want to shut those down either. We just want to hold them in a forum that is following what the case law is saying uh, of what we need to do to be um, following our obligations to our amazing staff. Um, and I also wanted to highlight that um, for anyone in the public who's looking at the document, the paragraphs added in, I don't know what color they are. Are they red? I think um, whatever color they show, they're on the first page. They were added hopefully to really emphasize that we really want to hear comments and we really are not trying to shut down comments from the public. Um, and the last thing I wanted to point out is that in the very last section where there's a sample statement about public comment that could appear on each agenda, I had emailed council and staff earlier today with a proposed amendment to that. Um, in the sentence which begins in the middle of the paragraph on the very left it starts with comments about specific town of orono employees whether they are positive or negative it currently says are prohibited during the public comment period i'm suggesting that we change that to say are prohibited during orono town council meetings um, that was an error on my mistake my part that i didn't catch that language that language in the school context works fine because they don't have comments out of any time other than what's officially called public comment period on their agenda, but we have them at a lot of points. We have them where it's called public comment. We have them during public hearings. We have them all over the place, and it needs to say that it they would be prohibited during or no town council meetings, in my opinion. Is that a motion? That is a motion to make that amendment. Okay. I would second that motion. Okay. Any more discussion? And I will say, I, I would add too that um, people are encouraged to talk about the departments of the town, and we will, you know, we welcome com uh, comments in public at our council meetings about how a uh, good or bad or you know areas for improvement um, about how a d town department is doing. We just will prohibit folks from naming folks as part of those comments. So it'll have to be you know speaking about the department and not about um, as awkward as that may seem given that so, uh, the size of some of our departments and how we know people on a first name basis. And we like to come in and say nice things about people um, when they're doing, when they're doing great work, but just to be, to be fair and to, and to protect everyone. Um, that's the way we'll proceed if this, if this passes. So if no more further comment, I would uh, take first a motion on the amendment offered by Councilor Marks. Did we get a, so it's the amendment's been moved and seconded. And all those in favor of Council Mark's amendment? It's unanimous. And I'd get a motion on the uh, now amended uh, 
public comment policy. So moved. Moved and second. Second by Councillor Bristol. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Order 2486 is an order authorizing the town council chair to execute an employment contract extension with the interim town manager to serve until a permanent town manager is appointed with funds drawn from the approved FY24 municipal operating budget. Uh, can I get a motion on that? So moved. moved. Moved seconded. by Councillor Kennedy, seconded. Ken Chenny, and seconded by Councillor Laraway. Is there any discussion? Just and for the cut. Oh, could you add fiscal year twenty four and twenty five, just in case you go over? <laughs> I was, yeah, like for you to be. We'll make that in twenty four. So but, moved. Okay. Move to make it twenty four and twenty five. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Laraway. You don't want it not. 26. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So it's been moved. The amendment's been added. Okay. And for um, for FY25, and just for the purpose of uh, the public's consideration and interest in this topic is we have, you know, we had our town manager candidates in town last week. Uh, those discussions with the candidates are moving forward. And, but, uh, Cornell Knights, our interim town manager, who is uh, serving us with a great deal of skill and um, is just just really been doing a good job for us. Um, his contract ends uh, May thirty first, twenty twenty four, and uh, we may need we we'll may need a little more time uh, with his services until the uh, until a, a permanent town manager is is appointed and and starts work. So I would first take a motion, take a vote. If there's no further discussion, we'll take an amount on the amendment, um, changing it to FY24 slash 25. Um, all in favor? Yep. And that was unanimous. And I'll take a motion on the underlying um, order 2486 as amended. All in favor? Yep. And that's unanimous. Now we're on to, again, Renumbering, uh, we're under item 2487, order confirming the town manager's appointment of William Cody as the public works director as per section 113A of the town charter. We will first get a motion to put it on the table, and then we'll turn it over to the town manager to present it to the to the council. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. I uh, guess the, the floor is yours, Cornell. Okay. Uh, Bill Cody uh, currently is the Director of Facilities, Maintenance, and Transportation for RSU 26. He's been there about three years. Uh, previous to that, he was uh, Director of Operations for the Calus Regional Hospital, and he worked at the Washington County Community College as uh, Director of Information Technology, Safety, and Security Officer. Uh, he's worked in the uh, paper mill in Baileyville as a millwright, uh, he was in the army, so he's a veteran. He's been a cop. Uh, he has a, a varied background. Uh, we had 15 applications for the position. Uh, the interview panel and I interviewed five. We had two back for review, uh, viewing the facilities, uh, met with staff, and uh, then a second interview with the, the uh, interview panel. And... Uh, the interview panel and I agreed that uh, Bill was the top candidate. So I'm um, pleased to uh, appoint him public works director. He would start in a month if approved. Yep. Any questions for Cornell or discussion? Yep. All those in favor of the motion? It's unanimous, and we're pleased to welcome um, Bill to the team. Thank you. Thank you, Cornell, for your good work on that and for everybody who served on the uh, search committee. Okay, the next item up on our agenda are future agenda items or items of concern. Anyone have anything that they want to share at this point? I know we've got something that will come up in the yeah, the town manager report. Do you want to take that now? Cordell? Yeah, I'll gladly do it now. Could yep. uh, something that'll come up. So uh yeah? I just want I did want to ask about um something. I don't know. Item of concern. Go ahead. Do, do you um, first? Council Kenny. Um when or has an ad 
been placed for fire chief or can you can you update on where where that process is at yeah he's he's working until june 30th right so um it'll be a little bit um and since he uh announced he's been on vacation he comes back tomorrow uh so i'll be talking with him about discussions about the transition um and so I may have a little more information for you at your budget meeting tomorrow where you're discussing public safety. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other items of concerns from counselors before we turn it over to Cornell to talk about future meetings? Yep. Cornell. Okay. I uh, just wanted to mention that uh, Zach Turner, uh, the finance director is now a certified tax collector and treasurer. He got his certification through the Maine Municipal Association. Um, I'd like to propose that next Monday's um, committee's meeting be a special meeting. Uh, the uh, last meeting, you approved me uh, executing a contract with uh, MJ for the Arts Festival. And uh, I met with her today and Councilor Powers, and uh, she had a bunch of uh, questions that I thought would be advisable to include in the contract and then have the council approve the contract. We have a standard uh, contractor's agreement that, that will work that has an attachment um, exhibit A. So she's working on exhibit A and I'd like to uh, have you review or approve the, the contract um, with her, with her uh, uh, proposal that she wants to move, uh, move ahead. She's looking at July uh, the weekend after July 4th. So I couldn't wait until July 10th, uh, June 10th, your next regular meeting to get that in. So that's why I'd like to um, kind of expedite it and have a special vote on, on her uh, order. So if we could make next Monday's a special meeting, that would um, help move that along. Um, Zach has posted, uh, uh, Councilor Marks has raised a number of questions about the budget and he's posted responses to your questions. So they're on the Google Drive um, for you to, to review. And the next budget review is tomorrow at five o'clock. Okay, Council Marks, you had a question? I did, but thanks to you and thanks to Zach Cornell for that. Um, I was just wondering with the contract with MJ Sedlock, um, is the weekend that it's, or the date where the event is happening part of the contract itself? Does it state the date we will have the, festival whatever it's called she's she's putting in that she's putting in that um her uh hopeful date is that and she'd like to have it several days okay. um as opposed to just one day but if she finds that uh the lineup of uh people for gigs uh isn't work then she wants to have the flexibility to move it uh, so it, it is going to have a range of dates. Uh, her likely date is is the uh, one that we like. Bless you. Um, that's great and really helpful. And I was also just wondering if we have um, maybe gotten her in touch with Jeff Owen, who's also planning a multi-day event, I think at the end of July or August regarding Leo. Do you remember the name? Um Jeff Owens event that's also at the end of July and into August, or maybe Matt does. It's a multi-sport. I don't know. What is it called, Matt? It's not. I don't think it has a name yet, um, or if it does, I'm unaware of it. My question was more just, I think it would be wise to get MJ and Jeff in touch with each other, because for all I know, it's great to have them on the same weekend, and that would just be more convergence of lots of cool things happening in Orono, but it could very well also be the opposite where they might talk and think, oh, this isn't going to work together and we should make sure they stay separate. So can we just make sure we, once the contract is signed, I guess, that we get MJ in touch with Jeff or if it's appropriate before sometime so they talk to each other? Okay. Council Powers, you take care I, of that? I can take care of that. Yeah. I will make sure that those committee, that those people talk to each other and, and um, that I can facilitate any of that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any, oh, Councilor Berthsel? I had another tiny scheduling note, which is um, for anyone who is interested, normally the DEIB committee meets on uh, the second Tuesday, um, but tomorrow, because we have um, a budget workshop, that uh, meeting has been canceled. So um, 
uh, I think the committee will convene and decide whether to meet at a different time this month or whether to just bump to next month. But okay. for those following along, that's a change of schedule. Apologies to the committee that our budget committee is our budget work takes so much time um, and appreciate their understanding. In terms of the special meeting for May 20th, that would be, um, do you need anything from us for that, Cornell? We're just, we're going to call it that way. So we will call the special meeting, uh, special council meeting for the May 20th. Um, we also meet, we also meet on May 21st for another council budget workshop, which is public works. Um, on the 21st, so which is a Tuesday. I want, did want to share the evening of the 20th is the night of the RSU 26 budget public vote at 7 p.m. So we'll try and be done our meetings by five to the extent that the public or members of the council want to participate or attend that meeting. Um, any other item of items of concern? Okay. The future agenda items. Cornell, do you have anything else in the town manager report? Um, any public petitions? No public petitions. They, we have no session executive session scheduled. And we do have before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I will point out that we have many uh, things to sign. So people don't bar the doors, but don't head don't run for the doors either. So we've got lots of stuff to sign. But that I'll take a motion to adjourn at 547 p.m. <laughs> Do we usually have a, also a call for public comment in addition to public petitions? I'm not sure. I mean, we might not have anybody, but. Yep, it would, yeah, I'd be happy to. Any public comment? Anyone online, Matt? Uh, Pete? Uh, Pete, sorry. <laughs> nope, not online. Okay. Okay. Just figured it was no, it's, worth, worth it's asking. Good catch. And we, we moved around a lot tonight. And I do apologize for those who tried to follow along. We did move around a lot. And um, there's a lot of moving pieces in Orno Town business. So, but thank you. And we're passing these down. Can I get a motion for adjournment at now 548? Motion. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded by the expedited corner of the room. And all in favor? I want to have some discussion. <laughs> yeah, it's unanimous. Thank you. All right. We're just signing and passing. <laughs> <laughs>